Tonight's CBS Reports begins with this historic announcement by the Surgeon General of the United States on January 11th, 1964. It is a judgment of the committee that cigarette smoking contributes substantially to mortality from certain specific diseases and to the overall death rate. That was three months ago. Today, the implications of this report to the nation's health and to its economy are just beginning to dawn. In the rural area, if we lose our tobacco, we're going to be hurting pretty bad now, that's for sure. If it will be a gradual process, we might, some can survive. If it comes all at once, uh, I think we're all going to go down to drink. At stake are the incomes of 750,000 families who farm the nation's fifth largest cash crop. The jobs of 96,000 men and women involved in tobacco manufacturing. The $8 billion a year tobacco industry, which pays more than $3 billion in federal, state, and local taxes, and $150 million worth of cigarette advertising with the ethical and moral problems it poses for all media, especially television. If a next door neighbor came to you and said to your son or your daughter, smoke, it's a good thing. Here, try this. It'll make you seem like a man. You'd probably throw him out of the house on his ear. Well, equivalently, persuasive advertising is doing something very, very similar. Uh, you, you're, you're dealing here with a very responsible uh, segment of our economy. And the people who are interested in the tobacco industry are just as interested in promoting and preserving and conserving the health of the American people as the average man of the street. If I thought that a democracy could, would always have money changers in the heart of the temple, uh, I would be a very unhappy woman. It seems to me that certainly a democracy above any and all forms of government should be able to set the public welfare at the center of every consideration. Here now was CBS News correspondent Harry Reasoner. This is the exhibit hall at the annual convention of the National Association of Tobacco Distributors and some of the products being shown to these 6,000 wholesalers. Quite plainly, these men are not completely dependent on cigarettes. But equally plainly, anything that affects cigarette sales is big news to them. Last year, this country produced and distributed $8 billion worth of tobacco products. There are something like a million and a half retail outlets for cigarettes, many of which tempt smokers with everything from pens to playing cards. This is the size of the economic edifice that would be threatened by any substantial and permanent change in American cigarette smoking habits. Dr. Luther L. Terry, Surgeon General of the United States. My advice to the smoker would be to stop cigarette smoking. Uh, my advice to the person who has not started smoking is don't start. Tonight, we ask several questions. What has happened since the Surgeon General's report? Has there been, is there likely to be, any remedial action? And finally, what moral or ethical obligation does this pose to the United States government, the tobacco industry, the advertising agencies that promote the sale of cigarettes to the tune of $150 million a year, the newspaper, magazine, radio, and television stations and networks that carry this advertising, including the station and network you are now watching. The cigarette health controversy has caused a collision of interests on a grand scale. The forces of public health are attempting to change the smoking habits of 70 million Americans. The conflict was joined in the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. This agency was created by Congress in 1914 to protect consumers from deception by either the written or spoken word. After the Surgeon General's report, FTC Chairman Paul Rand Dixon proposed action. Well, we proposed uh, that either one of the following statements shall appear clearly and prominently in every cigarette advertisement and on every pack, box, carton, or other container in which cigarettes are sold to the public. Now, caution, cigarette smoking is a health hazard. The Surgeon General's Advisory Committee on Smoking and Health has found that cigarette smoking contributes substantially to mortality from certain specific diseases and to the overall death rate. 
or in a shorter form for television and radio if someone would elect to do it. Caution, cigarette smoking is dangerous to health. It may cause death from cancer and other diseases. Then the, the second rule we proposed is uh, no cigarette advertisement shall state or imply by words, picture, symbol, sounds, devices, demonstrations, or anything else that smoking the advertised cigarettes promotes good health or physical well-being. And the third one is no cigarette advertisement shall contain any statement as to the quantity of any cigarette smoke ingredients. An example, tars and nicotine, which has not been verified in accordance with a uniform and reliable testing procedure approved by the Federal Trade Commission. Mr. Chairman, you're talking about an $8 billion a year complex, about 750,000 farmers and a lot of other people working in the tobacco industry. In a case like this, in an action which might damage it, will the commission get it backing from the administration? Well, I would uh, expect that the administration, sir, would expect us to do our job. During all the time that I've been here, I might say that uh, my experience is that the Federal Trade Commission is expected to do its sworn duties. The tobacco distributors who convened in Miami last week seemed unperturbed by the possibility that cigarettes might be labeled a health hazard. One of their principal speakers was Governor Terry Sanford of North Carolina, whose state leads in the production of tobacco. As governor of one of the states, I share with other governors many responsibilities. I share the responsibility for protecting the health of the people and I take those responsibilities seriously. I'm also given many responsibilities to protect the economic health of my people, and I do not in any way minimize these responsibilities. Therefore, I am compelled to examine carefully the report to the Surgeon General and to enter conscientiously the effort to clarify the findings, to answer the questions raised, and to do it all in a way which does not adversely affect either the physical or economic health. The report says that no simple cause and effect relationship is likely to exist between a complex product like tobacco and a specific disease in the variable human organisms. This to me says exactly what many others believe, that this report raised a lot of questions, but didn't find the answers. The tobacco capital of Governor Sanford's state is the city of Winston-Salem. Approximately one-third of the 523 billion cigarettes consumed in the United States last year flowed from the R.J. Reynolds plants of Winston-Salem. Chairman of the board of the largest bank in the city and state, Archie Davis, describes the economic significance of tobacco. It would be an understatement to say that tobacco is big business here in this state. As a case in point, uh, during the past 10 to 12 years, I would say that the uh, total uh, value of our tobacco production annually has been in excess of $500 million. We have 165,000 farm families deriving most, if not all, of their income from the production of tobacco. Last year, they produced approximately 900 million pounds of so-called flu-cured tobacco. Now let's turn to the marketing process. The marketing process, at least 50% of it, is right here in the state. That means there's some 10,000 workers located here in North Carolina. Now to the manufacturing process, there's some 40,000 industrial workers and employees in our tobacco manufacturing companies located here in North Carolina. Of that number, approximately 15,000 are uh, connected with our uh, tobacco manufacturing uh, plants here in Winston-Salem. And today, the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company produces all of its products in one community. This company produces better than one-third of all the cigarettes produced in America. That one-third is produced within the corporate limits of Winston-Salem. Last year, we produced and shipped from our plants engaged in tobacco processing here in the state in excess of $3 billion worth of all types of tobacco products. Now, quite obviously, 
this returns right much tax revenue to our state. But a matter of great significance to us here in this state is that 75%, or putting it more simply, 75 cents out of every general fund dollar received by our state is invested in education. So 75% of this tax money that I've just been speaking of goes in support of education here in our state. Winston-Salem is the leading manufacturing center for cigarettes, but the city of Wilson, North Carolina, is America's greatest marketplace for flu-cured tobacco, one of the major classes of tobacco now used in cigarettes. Last year, $50 million worth was sold in Wilson. Four of Wilson's tobacco farmers, including the county agent, W.D. Lewis, discussed their product with reporter Neil Cunningham. And down through the ages, this tobacco right here, American Blue Cure Tobacco that we raise, has been recognized throughout the world as having more quality and more aroma than any tobacco that's ever been raised anywhere. And a matter of fact, they tried all over the world to duplicate its flavor. But thank the Lord, up to now, they have not been able to duplicate its flavor. Do you feel that the people in the tobacco industry are worried about the effect of the Surgeon General's report? I don't think the people within the industry are too concerned, really, over the effect of the health scare. I mean, I believe they're going ahead, full speed ahead, to, to carry on their business as they have always before. And we as farmers want to maintain the, our standard of tobacco production to meet the needs of these companies. Lonnie, don't you think, maybe, I think we're concerned about the possibility of anything which will be injurious to the public. But I think we are, are confident enough that the solution can be found. In the meanwhile, we are, we've got open minds as farmers. We're not panicky about it. We are going on about our business or trying to raise an, a better quality tobacco for our own markets and for the world market. we in a position that we don't want to directly deny the hazard of tobacco to health. We don't intend it to be that way. We don't want it to be that way. We definitely want to know more about it, and we certainly don't want to produce something or market it something that is a health hazard. As family men, how do you feel about your children smoking? Well, I have three kids, uh, one 19, one boy that's 17, and as yet they don't smoke. I will not encourage them to smoke. I will never encourage them to smoke. I don't think that it's good for you. I don't think it promotes anything. Uh, it's uh, a relaxation thing for me. I uh, smoke them uh, not after meals or any time uh, to relieve some ner nervous tension or something like that. I, I don't say it promotes any health at all, and I, I would never encourage young children to smoke. What would happen to Wilson if tobacco were to disappear rapidly? We don't want to think about it, because 50% uh, of the gross product in our uh, town is dependent on tobacco, and 75% of our farm income. And uh, when you think about uh, replacing uh, 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 roughly $21 million, uh, and half of it is for return on labor. Tobacco requires a, a lot of labor. Uh, there's just no way you can even figure it out with a piece of paper how to replace uh, that income. In the rural area, if we lose our tobacco, we're going to be hurting pretty bad now, that's for sure, uh, because we have always been accustomed to having this source of income. If it would be a gradual process, we might, some can survive. If it comes all at once, uh, I think we're all going to go down the drink.